Look at that, amen. I want to welcome you in the name of the Lord, amen. It might be your first time. But you know, tonight you're going to hear a message of Jesus Christ, amen. Nothing of me. You might think that it's me that's speaking. But I'm reading from the Holy Bible, amen. The Bible that you've probably got at home. The Bible that you've got probably got in your chalets, in your houses, or your motors, or your trailers. Or wherever, wherever it is. That Bible I'm going to read out of tonight. And in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 12. And it says, There is a way that seems right to a man. But in the end it leads to death. I want to read that again. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. I want to echo tonight. Everybody agree with me in, in this place tonight. That there's a time we've got to close our eyes to this, to this world. There's a time when we've got to die. And if I was to say, an action, where would you want to go? You'd say, eh? I'd no doubt say that. Because the type of people we are, whatever you call yourself tonight, the type of people we are, we've always been brought up to know about God, something about God. When we go to schools, we hear about stories about Noah and the ark and different things about God. But how many times have you actually sat down and read the Bible for yourself? And here the Bible says that there's a way that seems right to me and there's a way that seems right to you. But the Bible says it leads to death. And you might think, well, my mum and dad brought me up in a very, very good, respectable way. Never to be cheeky. Always to do good. Get our living, come on, be a family man, be a family woman, raise your family, and that's as far as it goes. And you might say, well, I do what I do when I'm, I'm not here to nobody. But you know tonight that the Bible tells me that we're sinful people, amen. The Bible tells me in Isaiah 59, it says that our sins are separated us from God. And you might say, Sam, you can't say that. I'm a nice person. I've never done wrong. It's not I'm saying it. The Bible tells me. The Bible tells me that me and you are separated from God because of our sins. And you might say, well, I haven't got sin. The Bible tells me for all our sins and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us, myself personally and you as well, every one of us has sinned. Every one of us falls short of the glory of God. Because why? Because God says that. Not me. Not the people in this in church. But God says that we are separated because of our sins. And how do we get sin? In the beginning of the time, we know we've heard the story. Adam and Eve in the garden. They ate the fruit. Sin come into the world. You might say, well, it's been thousands of years ago. That don't apply to me now. I've got my own lane to run. The Bible tells me that sin entered through Adam. And sin entered the world. And because of it, all of us have sinned. We inherited it. As the time's gone on, we've inherited it. And you might say that sin, what is sin? Sin is very simple tonight. Sin is all wrongdoing. However good you think you are, sin is all wrongdoing. Whether you've chored a pen sweet, whether you've, you've lied, whether you've done something wrong in the, in the sight of the law of the land. Whatever it is, it's wrong. And you know today that you might fall in, into this category and you might think, I don't do it. But every one of us, the Bible says, that we've sinned. And because we've all sinned, the Bible tells us that we're separated from God. And you might think it's hard to say God wouldn't separate me from, from Him. But you know tonight, First beginning when I action, we'd all want to go to heaven. But what's the contrast to, to heaven if God's telling us that we're separated? There's a place called hell. 
Because when the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, when the Bible speaks about death, it means that total separation from, from God. And it means that if you don't deal with your sin, you go to a place called hell. And you might think, well, you can't say that. There's not really such thing as hell. The Bible speaks more about hell than what it speaks about heaven. The Bible speaks that hell awaits the sinner. Hell is waiting for you. The Bible says that it's dark, where the worm never dies, where there's gnashing of teeth. The Bible speaks about that tonight. I'm not trying to frighten you. But the Bible says that the one that don't deal with his sin, the one is sinful, is going to this place. Because God has said that we're separated. But you know today I want to remind you today that he was a man called Jesus Christ. Come. The Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And whoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. And you know, today I want to tell you that Jesus come. He walked the earth. He's done miracles. We know the stories. He healed the blind. He healed the sick. He's done miracles. And you know, tonight, you might think that it's, it's another story again. But today it applies to me and it applies to you. Because God had come and he started criticizing him. And he said that and saying that he was the son of God. And not once did he say, he said, I am and you say I am. And many a times we can look in the Bible and we can take it as a fairy tale. Many a times we can look at it and we can read it as a, as a storybook. But you know today that the Bible tells me that it's a living word of God. It's all God's breath, amen. And that's why we've got to take it on board and, and realize tonight that we know right from wrong. We know what we're doing is wrong. We know what we're doing is right. You know the flip on, on two different sides. But here we see that Jesus come. He lived a perfect life. And he started screaming, crucify him. And at any time he could have stopped him. But you know what the Bible says? That he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And not once did he say anything to these people. And he started to take him. And he took him to, to Pilate. And he said, what should I do with him? And he said, I can't do nothing with him. Because I've got nothing to to condemn you about. But the people kept saying and kept, kept screaming, crucify him. And you know, he, he led him. And he led him to the cross. Amen. For me and for you. Thank you I don't care who you are or where you've been or what you've done. Everybody has seen a cross with Jesus on it. And you might say, well, why haven't you got a cross with Jesus on it? Because Jesus went to the cross for me and for you. He shed his blood for me and you. And he put him in a tomb. And on the third day he rose again. And that's where we get the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where we got our way out. Before then, it was, it was difficult. But you know today, Jesus died for you. For God so loved the world. He didn't say, sort your problems out first. Then come to church. Then give God a chance. The Bible says, come now, let us reason together. Amen. Though your sins are like scarlet, he wants to wash them as white as snow. And today you might have a million problems. You might have a million things going on in your life, secret, deep down. God wants to reason with you. God wants to reason with you. And you might think, well, what have I got to do? Have I got to sign a contract? Have I got to sign a membership? The Bible tells me simply, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that he raised you from the dead, you shall be saved. And that's what we need to do. That's what you need to do. You need to confess with your, your mouth that God raised you from the dead. And the Bible says, not me, the Bible says that you will be saved. Like the, the, the boy, the prodigal son, the Bible speaks about a boy 
He went to his dad and said, give me my, my money, my share of the estate. And he got it. And the Bible says that he went and he lived a, 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 a life pleasing to himself. But it came to a stop. And he came to realise that he was away from God. And the Bible says that while he was a long way off, his father showed compassion. And he said, go and get the best robe. Go and get the fat fatted calf. Because my son was once lost, but now he's found. And I want to remind you today, you might have been saved. You might have had a relationship with the Lord once in your life. And you might have drifted away. And you might think it's a million miles away. Today, God wants to reason with you. God wants to do something in your heart today. Don't look at your problem. Look at Jesus today. He died for you. He rose again. And on the third day, the power of him that he wants to give you today. He wants to save you. While the brother comes up, you want to give your life to the Lord. There's many of these pastors who can pray with you. Confess with your mouth. Give Jesus a chance. Don't look around. Don't think about the person inside you. Don't think how far you're, you're away from God. He's only a prayer away. And he wants to help you. God bless you.